thank you so much for being here. It's just, it, it, I had a really good morning this morning with session one and I'm super excited to push through session two now because I know that I have lots to share and the feedback that we got from this morning has been really great too. So I can't wait to share it with you. So let's get stuck straight in. You are in the right place if you are a business owner. You're in the right place if you are somebody who feels a little overwhelmed with uh, the, all of the things that you have to do in running your own business, all of the hats that you have to wear and all of the juggling that you have to do. You are in the right place if you feel like you're running out of energy and you feel like you are working harder and harder and harder, but not necessarily getting any further along. You are in the right place if you want tips on how to work smarter instead of harder. And if you're tired of the hustle, if you're tired of pushing and pushing and pushing and, and really feeling like you're two steps forward and, and one step back or one step forward and two steps back, but not necessarily getting the momentum and moving forward like you would like to, you are definitely in good company. If you want your time back, if you want to have a little bit more control over the time that you do have, if you want to make sure you can, um, you can work towards that lovely word that we all uh, love to hate, balance, then you are definitely in the right place and you're in good company. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Um, for me, I want to share with you my business story and why I've come to learn some lessons the hard way with the idea of sharing those lessons with you in the hope that you won't have to make the same mistakes that I have made. So, um, where I started in business when I was younger, of course, you know, I've got a story that's very similar, I guess, to, to many of yours in that I was um, selling things at a very young age to my neighbours and my family, um, you know, repackaging and repurposing old gifts and taking them around the neighbourhood and running raffles and things like that. But my official business journey uh, when I wasn't trying to scam um, all of my neighbours was um, Image Management Enterprises, which was my first event management company that I started when I was 21 years old. And my biggest business adventure has been Port Macquarie Performing Arts, which is the dance school that I still run until today. And Port Macquarie Performing Arts started in my garage. I told my husband that we would just do it two afternoons a week and it would be really quite small. We just have a couple of um, students, just like two or three um, on one day and two and three on the other, just some little classes, nothing too major. And of course, um, I had 70 kids turn up on the first day and, and the rest is history. This is our 11th season that we're going into for Port Macquarie Performing Arts. And along the way, I've gone from the business owner who was working full time um, through um, to just having the ballet school as my side hustle, all the way through to this being my absolute full time and, and absolute everything. I often refer to Port Macquarie Performing Arts as my first baby because it really was in those early days, I was nurturing it like a small child and it was taking up just as much time and attention as, as any of my kids did when they were born. But um, the story I wanna share with you tonight essentially is about how I went from wearing all the hats, doing all the juggling, and uh, have got myself to a position now where I have incredible people that I am surrounded by and I am able to pick and choose the things that are in my wheelhouse, the things that I'm good at and the things that I enjoy. And I'm able to do more of those in my business and then have more time to myself and to spend with my family and to spend on the things that um, matter in life to me. It's about... Um, you know, it's about time that I give you the story about the turning point, because for me, there, in those early days, I was happy to work really long hours. I was happy to be up till 11 o'clock at night doing the invoicing and doing the marketing and up early the next morning and continuing moving. Of course, a PMPA was a side hustle for me. I was working at the radio station during the day and well, in, in the morning, especially because I was a breakfast radio host. So I'd get up really early and do the, you know, 5 um, a.m. till 10 a.m. shift and go home and have a nap and then go to the studio at two o'clock and teach till nine o'clock at night and then go home from that and, and do more of the office work and uh, make sure that everybody had correct invoices and everybody's entries were in for the competition and things like that. So in those early days, I was happy to hustle and I was happy to be wearing all the hats. And I really positioned myself as really accessible and really um, I wanted to be as helpful as possible and do all of the things in the business. And then I fell pregnant with my daughter Lucinda. And here's a picture of me teaching 
class the day before I had Lucinda um, because of course I wanted to be everything to everybody and I had promised all of my clientele that I was having a baby but nothing would change I would still be very available to everybody I would still be teaching classes I would still be um, you know packing the costumes in the boxes everything that I'd done in the past I would still be doing which I look back on now and I think that is absolute bonkers that is just crazy but at the time I was so afraid that people wouldn't trust me and trust their children um, to come to me for their dance education if they thought that I had dropped the ball at all and as a mother when I had my baby I then of course didn't want to drop the ball at home either there was so much more responsibility that came with me now being a mum and trying to do both of these things at the same time and so i I gave it a good crack. We went on an overseas tour and I took the baby. We moved studios and I, and I, you know, had the baby in the capsule screaming while I was painting the walls, the brand new color. Like I did all the things and I very much held up my end of the bargain, which I had like crazily agreed to myself. Um, And what ended up happening was the, it was the straw that broke the camel's back. We had a big summer dance intensive and I absolutely lost it. I we I said to my husband, we have to get away. We have to pack up. We hired a little house um, about an hour away from here and just took off with the baby. And we were walking um, down to the beach. Lucinda was in the pram and I just burst into tears. And I said, this is it. I can't do this anymore. Something has to change. And that was the big moment for me. And that was when I decided that If I was going to try and be everything to everybody, I was going to end up being nobody to anybody. So it it really was time where I had to make a big shift. And so I decided to start stepping back from several roles in the business and started to teach less and started to bring on people who um, were cleverer than than me to do other roles in the business that, um, that they enjoyed. So that there were you know, several things that used to be very much um, my responsibility. And then I stepped back so that they um, didn't have to. And that took for me a lot of courage and bravery because I was such a control freak and I wanted control of everything. And I wanted to be seen to be in control of everything. And what I've learned about leadership and management since then um, is that that kind of control and that kind of micromanaging is not helpful for anyone. It wasn't helpful for me and it definitely wasn't helpful for my staff. So then I had my second child, Patrick, and I still stepped back even further. And then when Henry came along, Henry was a bit of a surprise. And so I very much um, had a very stern conversation with my husband and said, no, even this, which was so much better than when I had Lucinda in terms of situations, I said, even this has to change. I need to step back even further and get some um, people in some key roles in order for me to have the time to be mum to now three children. So the result is I am now in a position where I have the opportunity to define my own version of success. Success for me used to mean busy. Success for me used to mean really stressed. Success used to mean go, 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 go. Um, I'm helping you. I'm helping you. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm, I'm going, going, going. And what I've realized is that success for me is actually completely different to that. It's time to myself. It's time with my family. It's time to contribute to my business in ways that I'm really helpful. It's time to be a good leader. Um, It's time to nurture my team. It's time to build my own brand. And it's time to ride my little blue bike into town on a Monday for my meetings. They are the things that make me happy and that light me up. And I'm lucky to be in a position now with my business where I'm able to actually Uh, centre all of the things that I do around those things rather than just running around like a chook with its head cut off. So today we're going to talk about the five strategies that I have learnt. Get your notepads ready because I do talk fast if you haven't noticed already. I tend to zip through things and that's why we're providing everybody with the replay we'll send that to you later on tonight because it is important that um, you get some time to slow me down if you (laughs) would like to but again if you think of any questions please put them in the chat Christy's there to answer um, and to to make sure that I'm come and follow them back at the end and I would hate for you to think of a question and then forget about it and we get to the end and you go ah because this hour is time for you it's time where you get to um to quiz me. So I want you to make the most of it. Number one on my list of five strategies is to set your goals and to plan your time. 
So Laura Vanderkam is my hero when it comes to um, time planning and time tracking. She's written many incredible books, including 168 Hours and What Successful People Do Before Breakfast. If you haven't read them, they are spot on, especially because she's a woman. She's got six children of her own. One of them is also called Henry. Um, and she is, you know, the queen of being able to manage the time that she has and make the most of the time that she has. So um, I just love all of Laura's work. And she is, um, she talks talks a lot about tracking your time and the importance of tracking your time because the thing is often we oh, we always think you know I could spend more time doing this or I spend too much time doing this but actually in reality we have a lot more time than we actually believe that we do and tracking your time is a really good way to be able to see that in a really kind of clear visual way I'm a bit of a visual learner so that helps for me so getting a time tracking um, download from Laura's website where it's you know gives you all of the hours that you have in your week sticking that on the kitchen bench and being able to track your time and track the things that you're actually doing is really helpful because as I said sometimes we don't know where all of our time is going and we wonder where all of our time is going and this is a really good way to be able to figure out where that is once you've figured it out you can then be really conscious about planning what is working and what is not and what you want to continue on into the future and that is you know what I I call planning your ideal week and planning your ideal week doesn't need doesn't mean that you sit back and plan things that are completely unrealistic you know on Monday I'm going to sit by the pool and drink cocktails on Tuesday I'm going to go out for lunch like that's not what I'm talking about yes that would be ideal but when I'm talking about planning your ideal week I'm talking about making sure that you have time in your week to really tick off all the things that you want to do the things that really will light you up because if you don't plan it you know, things that get planned, get done. If you don't plan it, it's not going to happen. And you can turn around and be stuck in the same position that you were years and years later. So in my planning of my ideal week, and I just get a blank piece of paper and I do it every season. You know, Nina Christensen talks a lot about seasons, not about necessarily making a plan and thinking I'm going to do this forever. She makes plans and says, well, this will work for this season. And when it doesn't work anymore, we just create a new season. And I love that concept. So in my planning, I have time for work. I have time for deep work where I can really get lots of stuff done in my work time. I kind of, that's when I'm at the studio. That's when I've got people coming at me for questions. That's when I'm clearing my inbox, when I'm tackling things that take, you know, less than 10 minutes. When I have deep work time, I really try to tackle stuff that it's going to take me an hour or more. And so I put the time aside for those things. Um, I, like to plan in rest, uh, rest and relaxation. I like to plan in family time. I plan in appointments, especially because my kids have lots of appointments. So I'm constantly running them to things. I plan in health and wellness and I plan in time for play. And Brene Brown talks a lot, especially in the gifts of imperfection about play and the importance of play. You know, when you go away on holidays and you might, you know, go to the beach every day and then you play Jenga on the floor and you'd go to mini golf and you do things like that, that you normally wouldn't do during your normal week. And you come back from holidays and you feel really refreshed. Part of that is because play is such an important recharge. You know, Brene says work does not work without play. And so your body and your mind actually need that play time. So scheduling that into your ideal week is super important. And Brene also talks about creating a joy and meaning list. So things that you know bring you joy and that have meaning in your life, where are you scheduling them in to make sure that they are happening? Because it's those kind of things that help you, you know, pull out of that state of overwhelm and pull away from that kind of feeling of, of resentment that you spend all of your time in your business and you don't necessarily feel like you're moving forward. Adding play can be a really super simple way to try and um, to recharge yourself um, when it comes to your body and your mind. So setting goals and planning your time is super important. At the end of each of my five strategies, I'm going to give you a tangible takeaway. And the tangible takeaway for this one is to start tracking your time. Download your own version. You can get 15 minute increments or 30 minute increments on Laura's website, lauravandercam.com. And it's really valuable. I know you're rolling your eyes and thinking, I don't have time to track my time, but I'm pleading with you to at least give it a go. Print one off today. Do that before you go to bed tonight. Print it off, stick it on the kitchen bench, put a pen with it, track your time and see where you, all of your time is going. Because when I did this exercise for the first time, I was really feeling really stretched in so many different directions. I was feeling like I didn't spend enough time with my kids and I didn't spend enough time at the studio with my team. And I didn't, I wasn't doing this and I wasn't doing that. But when I tracked my time and colored it in, cause I like color coding. So I've tracked, I'd colored all of my 
blue, all my work blue and all of my family pink. And I looked back at it and I was like, actually, there is a lot of blue there and there is a lot of pink there. So maybe I don't need to feel so bad. Maybe I can give myself a little bit of grace and actually reward myself for doing okay. It took seeing it visually to be able to, you know, cut myself some slack. So I hope that you can take the time to track your time and that it becomes something that you can not just do, but you can then do and then make change from as well, because that's super important. My second strategy to help you feel like you're in control of your business rather than your business controlling you is to get really clear on your messaging. Do you know what your why is, your own personal why? Do you know what your vision is for your business? Do you know what your mission is? Why are you doing what you're doing? And do you know what your company values are? I'm sure that you're thinking, well, yeah, I think I do. I kind of do. I did an exercise about that one time or I listened to a podcast about that that one time. The thing with vision and mission and values and your own personal why is that it's all well and good to do a task on it and to have it written down somewhere. But if that piece of paper goes into the bottom of a drawer and you don't look it again and you don't live it all the time, then it's really, really hard to get others to buy into exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it. So when it comes to vision, mission and values, it's really important that you get really clear on what, why you're doing what you're doing. What gets you out of bed in the morning? What's the purpose of it all? And then communicating that to all of the people that are stakeholders within your business. Because if it's just going to stay in your mind or if it's just going to stay written on a piece of paper in the bottom drawer, then it's never going to be followed through and you're never going to have buy-in from all of the stakeholders in your business. And that is super important, especially if you want people to step up into roles and to take on responsibilities in order to give you a little bit more free time and give you the opportunity to kind of step back from all of the things that you do in your business. You want people to have that buy-in. You know, people talk about how you'll never find somebody who will care about your business as much as you do. That may be true, but if you want to get them closer to that position where they do care, then you need to be able to communicate with them the reason why you're doing what you're doing, the reason why these things are important. And developing your vision and mission and your values for your business is a really super simple way to start with that. I was listening to Brene Brown. She released a podcast episode on Dare to Lead uh, yesterday, and I was listening to it this afternoon, and she's talking about how... um, She's talking about daring leadership, which of course she talks about all the time, but she said during the episode, I think it would be valuable if I put together, you know, a a workshop-y type podcast where I talked everybody through their values. And I was like in the car going, yes, yes, Brene, that would be great. But as I said, it's not just enough to do the task and to come up with those values and to know what they are. You really need to be able to get them out there. And you can use your values when you develop them for um, your business to also impact the decisions that you're making. Those values are the things that can kind of be like your guiding light. If you need to make big decisions, especially around um, people in your business, then sticking to those values and watching people enact those values in your business is super powerful. So I do encourage you to not just develop your vision and your mission and your values, but also to be communicating them and to be putting them out there. We at Port Macquarie Performing Arts, we teach children dance and we have done that forever and that's been our thing and that's what we used to tell people in all of our messaging and communication we teach dance classes yes we do ballet tap and jazz we do all the things and I knew in my mind that actually what we did in addition to teaching dance was we gave kids confidence and we made kids feel great about themselves and I knew that because I saw it every day in the studio but it wasn't until we actually started telling our customers and clientele and community that that's what we did that we just got all of this great feedback and could have such a bigger impact because we were seeing it in the studio, but we weren't necessarily communicating it. Once people started to figure it out and we started to tell them, and then they started to see it in their own child, they were like, whoa, this is huge. This is amazing. She's so confident. She's so great. And for us, that made a really big difference in our business. 
And it makes a really big difference for what we deliver even to this day, because so many of our competitors will just talk about the dance classes that they do. But for us, we don't talk about the dance classes. We say through dance, we do X, Y, and Z. Um, but the X, Y, and Z are all of the great um, things that we do in addition to the dance classes. We, we give kids, you know, great body confidence. We give them great self-esteem. We build up their self-worth. We make them feel fabulous, all of those things. So get clear on your messaging, figure it out what it is that you do, and then go ahead and tell all of your clientele, all of your team, all of the people that come in as your customers. Because when people understand the bigger picture, they're going to A, want to buy from you if they're your customers, and B, they're going to want to get on board and do more for you um, as your team members. So if we're talking about the, the bigger picture, if we're talking about what we want to get to is more time for ourselves, then we're going to need a team. And we're going to talk about team in a little while, but we're going to need a team that's really behind us and really has our back. And the easiest way to get them on that train moving forward is to be able to really talk to them about um, your vision, mission and values and to revisit it because sometimes these change. Simon Sinek talks about values being more important than just being words. He talks about values needing to be actions. So it's not just enough to say honesty is one of our values at our company he wants you to be able to say we speak honestly with each other and to make these values words actions so I if you have worked on your values before have a think about them go back to them revisit them are they actions is it really clear what we mean by those values Simon you know gives the gives the example of honesty and says you know honesty it's, it can be really, really grey when you're talking about different um, scenarios. But um, am I speaking honestly? Did you speak honestly? Did you speak honestly to you? Like it's really, really black and white when it comes down to it. So I encourage you to turn your values into action steps as well. And to make sure that um, you're really being clear in that communication and it doesn't just occur, you know, the weekend after you do staff retreat and you talk about the values, make sure your values are in your email signature, make sure they're at the top of your newsletter each week, make sure um, there's a version of your logo that has them in there too. get them printed out on stickers and have them up on the wall, put them as many places as possible so that everybody can see it all the time. You're talking it all the time. Everyone's feeling it all the time because that will do so much to build your brand. Um, that get clear on your messaging is such an important part in being able to move your business forward. So your tangible takeaway is to revisit your personal why, revisit your company vision. And if you haven't done um, either of these and actually spent some time and written them down, then do that for the very first time. If you haven't read Simon Sinek's Start With Why, it's a great place to start. Start with why. The book and the concept. Because um, Simon is really, really excellent. And this is... Um, a cute photo of, of some of our students and we talk all the time about community and that's one of our values and when the kids were in lockdown and they couldn't come to dance classes they all made signs about wanting to come back to dancing and so we made a little collage of all of those things until we could get back in the studio and it's those little things that really feed into our values um, and that I hope that you can create for your business as well. Number three is know your numbers. Do not roll your eyes at me. I know that for so many of us, you hear know your numbers and you go, oh, do I have to? And, you know, for so many years in my business, probably the first three at least, I had my head in the sand when it came to any of the numbers in my business. I was so afraid that I would, you know, open my bank account one day and there would be nothing in it, <laughs> that I just spent a lot of time just um, wishing and hoping and crossing my fingers and closing my eyes and going, la, 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 la. That's not where I sit anymore. And the power in knowing your numbers as part of your business um, can just absolutely skyrocket what you're doing. So when I'm talking about knowing your numbers, I'm talking about the things that make your business tick. What are the things that you need to know? And it's different for every business, but what are those things that you need to know that are really going to help you make really good decisions based around your business? They're going to help you make good decisions based on the resources that you can get. Um, they're going to make you help you make really good decisions um, because it's not enough for me just to say, hey, take some more time off, give some jobs to other people. If the business can't afford that, 
then that's not really good advice. So knowing your numbers is super important. You need to know what you need to be making, what you need to be bringing into the business in order to make budget and keep the lights turned on. You need to know um, what it's costing you to have a customer come through your doors, whether you're selling a product or a service, what is that acquisition cost? You need to know that so that you can make sure that you're making smart decisions based around your marketing. You need to know what your retention numbers are. If you're in a business that um, relies on your customers coming in once and then returning time and time again, you need to know what those numbers are and you need to know what it costs when someone doesn't come back, when you lose one of those customers. That's also really important as well. You need to know what your overheads are. What is it going to cost to keep the lights on? And where are the areas that we can make sure that we're re be really being smart around um, all of our expenses? And then you need to know numbers around base, based around what your competitors are doing. And I'm not saying to drop what you're doing and, and you know go down the street and spy on other people that are also doing the same thing that you're doing. But you need to at least be aware of what other people in the market are doing and whereabouts do you sit in the market too? Because that is super important when it comes to making big decisions. And you need to know, you know what profit you want to make this year what profit you need to make, um, whether you have loans that need repay, repaying, when are those loans going to be paid off? How is all of that working? How is that um, going with your cash flow? These are all really important numbers in your business. And as I said, I was never really great at it. It was not something that I was like, couldn't wait to sit down and, and do the books, couldn't wait to reconcile the accounts. That was never me. I was always more happy to be in the business and to be teaching and to be completely ignoring and just hoping for the best. But what I have learned is that the more I am on top of the numbers, the less I'm waking up at 4am in the morning going, <gasps> something's worrying me, what could it be? Because it's normally the fact that I don't know what's going on. And, you know, the more control I then had over on being able to make good decisions. Can I afford that brand new set of tutus? Can I afford to take the kids to Sydney to see Frozen? All of those things um, are really super important. And I was lucky to be um, pulled out of the sand by my business mentor, who uh, she has a banking background. And when we first met, she just could not believe... <laughs> that I just would avoid at all costs and would just tangent and would distract. And I had all the tactics and she still makes fun of me for it. Um, but I was lucky that she was persistent. And so she kept at me and kept at me. And now, um, now occasionally I impress her with, <laughs> with some of the numbers knowledge that I have. So your tangible takeaway for knowing your numbers is to implement financial Fridays. Financial Fridays is something that I started back in 2014. Every Friday, I spend at least 15 minutes sitting down, getting rid of distractions, turning off my notifications, putting a timer on if I have to so that I sit still and actually don't get distracted. And I go through the books and I figure out how we're going in terms of our numbers. And that information and that education has been so valuable. If you don't think you can put 15 minutes aside, then start with seven minutes and, and work your way up. But I encourage you, tomorrow is Friday. Have your first financial Friday. Take a photo of yourself and send it to me and then turn your phone off. Um, do 20 minutes next week. Do 30 minutes the week after. Call your accountant. If you actually sit down and go, I've got no idea. I don't know. I'm a bit lost. Make the time to call your accountant. Email them tonight and say, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, I'm calling you for a 15 minute chat about blah, whatever is worrying you. It's really important, especially with your numbers to surround yourself with people who can help you out. You do not need to do all of it yourself, um, but you do need to get started and you do need to have enough knowledge to be able to make good decisions. So if you're someone with your head in the sand, I encourage you and I'm here to hold you accountable and happy to help help pull you out because I know how valuable it was when, when Glenda did it for me. Number four is surround yourself with the best people. And here's a great photo of my fabulous people. Steve Jobs has always said, hire people that are smarter than you and then grow those people. And I have the most incredible group of teachers that I am surrounded by. And I'm so, so super lucky. When I was pregnant with Henry, you know, I said, you know, things need to change even, I need to step even further back from the business. I came up with all the jobs that need to happen in for the um, studio to continue running. And then I divided those into to things that were similar and created roles around them and offered them to my team first and foremost. If I couldn't fill them, I then went externally. But the amount of members of my team who 
stepped up and went, yeah, marketing. Yep. I'd be happy to take that on. Oh, the teacher training program. Yep. I'd be happy to take that on and kind of stepped up was just phenomenal. And those I've been able to nurture and, and manage those people in those roles. And they've really grown over the last three years. Um, you know, and so, so much stuff gets done now that doesn't even need to come past my desk because they are just so capable. And that happened because I surrounded myself with great people and then I gave them the power to be able to step up into roles and then empowered them to do those roles really well. So when it comes to having a great team, getting the right people on the bus you know, Jim Collins in Good to Great always talks a lot about the bus and making sure you've got the right people on the bus. It's not just enough to have those people on the bus. Those people need to be in the right seats as well. And then you need to make sure you're looking after those people in those seats. So it's about giving your team autonomy to be able to do their jobs well. It's about not micromanaging them. It's about not looking over their shoulder. You need to give them a chance to succeed or fail no matter what's going to happen. And then you need to have the patience to be able to manage them and nurture them through those moments. I often refer to the 80% rule because I think when I first started in business, I would expect everybody that worked for me to teach the same way I did, to greet the kids the same way I did, to dress the same way I did, to do all the things the same way I did, which is completely unrealistic. But I guess that was my expectation. What I've learned is that it's so much more valuable to let people be themselves and to find their own way to 100%. And quite often they won't get to 100% and do it exactly the same way as you did or get the exact same result. But often they'll get 80% of the way there. And then as a leader, if you're happy to either take 80% as, yep, that's good enough, that will do because I, hey, I didn't have to do any of that like as opposed to me doing the 100%, them doing the 80% and then getting done is pretty good. Or if you get it to 80% and then you want to help build them up and um, give them extra skills, then the next time they bring it to you, it might be at 85%. And the following time it might be at 90%. And, and then eventually you may get closer to 100%. Um, it's all about changing your mindset and being really realistic with your expectations and really clear with your expectations as well. And, you know, that comes with learning about management and learning about leadership. And they're two of my, um, two of my, like love languages, I completely um, really geek out when it comes to leadership and management, but I was never really good at it. It was not something that came really naturally to me. So I've had to learn along the way. Um, and if that's something that you need to do in your business as well, then I'm more than happy to support you in that. So the tangible takeaway is to go through your to-do lists. And this is what I did when I had Henry. I went through every job that needed to be done. And who was doing all of these jobs? And so often I still do this. I go back over my to-do lists and I have a look at the to-do lists I have in front of me now. And I think, what are the jobs on these lists that actually don't need to be done by me, that could actually be done by other people because they're probably better at it than I am. They'll probably do it quicker. They will probably do it on time. They probably won't be have, have to be hounded four times to check their email to make sure it gets done. What are those things that you have on your to-do list that you can either do and get done because they're in your wheelhouse they're in your zone of genius what are the things that you can delegate off immediately and just go you know what that is actually a marketing job and I have someone that does marketing so off that goes over there and what are the things on our to-do list that we need to delete because often there are things that just hang around that we think we should do we think we should do that's like the operative word we should be doing it but often everything can run and everything will be fine without those things too so Please don't fear that crossing something off your list and, and putting it aside and just not doing it is, is um, a bad words because it's not. I do it all the time. Have a good think about what you can delete off your to-do list immediately. And the last one is my favorite. Get some white space in your calendar. Get some flamingo time. If you listen to Miss Bossy Boots, my podcast with Jane Hilston, we talk a lot about flamingo time. And I talk about flamingo because flamingo is the color on the Google calendar that's like that kind of off pink color. And that's the color I use when I'm scheduling my time. Um, to just put nothing in, to just put white space in. And please don't roll your eyes at me because, yes, when I first heard this concept, I thought the person telling me was nuts. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> no, what? Scheduling nothing, that seems crazy to me. But I tell you what, it's addictive. Once you start, it becomes very hard to stop. So I encourage you to schedule some white space or some flamingo time in your calendar. And that is time to do absolutely nothing. And now 
I know you're looking at me going, Stacey, it's not possible for you to stop and do absolutely nothing. And that is correct. But the deal with white space or flamingo time is that you actually get to choose. So you have that time aside, there's nothing scheduled in, and then you get to choose what you want to do with that time. If you choose that you want to go and work, cool. If you choose you want to go and read a book, cool. If you choose you want to go and have a massage, great but you get to choose what you do in that time. And even if you can only schedule in 15 minutes a week, that is a great place to start with Flamingo Time. You will look forward to it. You will get excited about what it can bring. And then you will find that you will move things around in your schedule and move people and and things that you are doing as obligations around to give yourself some more white space and some more Flamingo Time. And if you can, when you do get that time for white space, get out of your space. Get out of your physical space that you're used to working in or being in because the change in scenery can do incredible things for your brain. I don't know about you, but whenever I go on holidays, I just, my brain explodes because I get out of my comfort zone. I get out of the regularity, I get out of the routine. And then I find I have all of these ideas. Some great, some not so great, but it's just that change of scenery that really helps. So if you do put some white space in your calendar and you can go to a different cafe that you normally wouldn't go to, if you can go down to the river or go down to the beach or go somewhere else, go and sit in a park, sit under a tree, sit on, sit on some grass. My cousin Jackie's on this call and I'm giving all these nature references and she knows that I'm, I hate nature. So, uh, that might work for you sitting under a tree on the grass, not so much for me, but if that works for you, then, then go rock it. Um, Because I think that just getting out of your zone and getting out of what you normally do in the space you're normally in can be really super valuable. So your tangible takeaway is to block out some time right now. Pick up your phone. Don't get distracted by your notifications and don't start scrolling on Facebook while you're listening to me. But do block out that time right now. If you can, do it in the next three days, Friday, Saturday or Sunday. Where can you find 15 minutes to block yourself some flamingo time, some white space, some I'm going to do nothing during this time. And then when it turns up, just stop and breathe and then go, hmm, what do I feel like doing right now? Because often we don't get a chance to do what we feel like. We just do what we have to do, especially as mums, right? Make that time non-negotiable. If you need to tell people in your family that it's happening, tell everybody that you need to tell. You don't have to start big. It's not, I'm not saying to you go book a holiday to, you know, um, Hayman Island and then go and sit there for seven days, just take 15 minutes, take it for yourself and take a step out of your normal, normal world. And when you implement all of these things that you'll notice that you have more time for the things in your life that really matter, you'll be able to work smarter, you'll be able to do things that A, you enjoy, but that B, you're really good at. So it means that when you're getting out of bed in the morning, you're actually excited about the things that are on your calendar. You're actually excited about the things on your to-do list because they're things that you're good at and they're things that invigorate you and light you up and kind of get you going. Rather than for so many of us in business, our to-do lists are full of things that we just have to do. My aim for you is to try and move those things off your to-do list and onto other people's to-do lists and so they still get done, but so that they're not weighing you down. Because I think that's a really hard place to come from. And some of you might be on this call now because you are feeling weighed down just by how much you need to get done in your business. And so I want to kind of free you of that. In saying that though, it's super hard to make big changes when you feel alone. I don't know about you, but I'm I'm one of very few people in my family that run their own business. So often I find it really hard to switch off. The buck always stops with me. So it's always kind of at the back of my mind. Even, Even when I do have downtime, I find it really hard for people to understand that that down that downtime is still is I'm still thinking about the business and that's okay um so it's really important to surround yourself with people who get it and who get you um and I know I was going to say Heath is better now he is better now he now runs his own business but in the early days when he was working for someone else he would like clock off at five and come home and I'd be thinking about tutus and about this and about this person and that and he'd be like you're not working can you stop working and now he runs his own business and he does the same thing and so I at least have someone to connect there with but it's really important for you if you don't have that person in your partner that you can connect with and that really gets you then I really encourage you to find yourself a really supportive um, network and a supportive group of people who get that who get the being up at 4am worrying about the cash flow and who get um, 
all of the different challenges that come with managing people. You need to be surrounded by people who understand those challenges and that want to help you in on that journey. And speaking of, we have a fabulous Facebook group that I would love you to join because it's full of really dynamic, really ambitious, really fabulous people. It's called How to Run a Successful Business and Still Have a Life, which is also the title of my new podcast launching on the 5th of May. And it is a place where you can come and share. You can come and share your challenges. You can come and celebrate your wins. You can come and ask questions. I jump in there and talk about things that are coming up um, when I'm having different coaching clients. I often find that even though I have clients in Canada and America and New Zealand and Australia that I get to a point where at some, some weeks, everyone's asking the same kind of question. And so I jump in the group and talk about that. Cause I figure if, if I'm getting asked that one-on-one -on -one quite often, then, you know, someone else has got to be thinking it as well, right? So I often jump in there and um, and share my thoughts with, with what's going on in my world. And the great thing is it's free. It's a Facebook group. You can come in, you can be, um, you can share as much or as little as you like. There are people in there that are at different parts of their journey. There's people there who have product businesses, service businesses. They have, um, you know, a range of different businesses from different areas and different stages of business too. So it's a really nice, um, loving, supportive network. And I really hope that you can join us there. But if you feel like you're ready to make a really big shift and to really invest in making changes in your business in order to be able to move your business forward, if you want someone to hold your hand and someone that will help you get what you want in business and in life, then my Thrive Mastermind, which is kicking off on the 19th of this month, may be exactly for you. It's everything that you've been looking for in terms of business strategy that is tailored to you one-on-one -on -one, that will be specific to your business and specific to moving your business forward, not just kind of an online course that gives you general information that you then need to unpack and think how does this refer to me um, there are plenty there is plenty of time for it to be really tactical and strategic about you and your business you also get practical and tactical education and content to keep you learning and to keep you improving in all of the areas of your business and there's accountability by you know from me and also from the other people in the group people who are like-minded people who are also looking to grow their business they will be there for you as well and will help you along on the journey. So it's specifically designed for small business owners who want to grow and scale their business in order to live a lifestyle that has been promised to them through entrepreneurship. You know, we get into running our own business because we know that we will get this lifestyle and we've been promised this lifestyle where we will be able to control and manage our time. And often it doesn't really feel like that. But our aim in Thrive is to be able to get you from where you are now to a place where you really feel like you have that control. If you own your own business and you are tired of working hard year after year, if you know that you are destined for a bigger impact, but you're really not sure where to start, it's really time to get the support that you crave and get a group of people around you that are going to have your back and add into that the education that you deserve in order to be able to upskill yourself and your team and move your business forward. So Thrive is for women. If you're running a product or a service business, it's about um, increasing your customer engagement, making sure that your business is firing on all cylinders in all of the different aspects of um, business and making sure that you are feeling in control. As part of Thrive, I'm going to um, take you through a really robust goal setting process um, so that you can set goals that are really tangible and reachable, not, you know, a flighty kind of um, picking them from the middle of the year and then, then never achieving them and then feeling terrible, uh, terrible about yourself. We, we go through a process that's going to get you really working on your goals and really getting you ticking things off your list. We're going to help you make changes in your business that's going to free up your time in order to work on the things that really matter, like picking the kids up from school or going for that massage on the Friday, the things that you know would be good for you that you wished you had time for. The aim is to be able to make that happen for you. We will also help you get the most out of your team because it's not just um, about having the right people on the bus. It's about being able to manage and lead them really well. We'll help you make sure that your marketing message is really clear so that you're reaching your ideal customers so that you're kind of weeding out those people who aren't your ideal customers. Cause I don't know about you, but I find that when I get people in the business who aren't my ideal customer, I can see it a mile away, but I, they take up so much time and energy and create so much drama and complaints and things. And I, I know the importance of being able to um, manage your marketing and get your message out there. So it's really clear and you're attracting the people that are really suited to you and therefore you're avoiding all of that drama. 
will help you understand the important numbers in your business and really get you skilled up in terms of knowing um, what is important to know and get your head out of the sand and will help you um, make your business work for you instead of against you. What you'll get as part of Thrive is six months worth of group coaching calls that will be held on the last Thursday of each month. You get two individual coaching sessions with me in order to tailor the program to your business and to your goals and to make sure that it's going to be really um, right for you and a great fit. You get access to the Thrive community, which is the group of like-minded business women who are all ready to take the journey with you. And that is a really important network. And I find that as part of these programs, um, you know, mastermind programs, you find people people within there that are your people and those are the people that um, they become lifelong friends and join you um, um, along your journey far for far longer than the actual mastermind exists. Uh, we do goal setting workshops to get you really clear on what you want to achieve for the next five years. This is the exciting part. You get a year's worth of access to the Business Made Simple University, which has been written by Donald Miller and his fabulous team at Story Brand. It's like an MBA, but it's not $30,000. It has content on all aspects of business and really, really robust stuff that is really practical and tangible and stuff that you can get stuck into and learn right away. So if we have a one-on-one -on -one session as part of Thrive and we, we discover that where your business is falling down is in sales but perhaps we're not going to tackle sales as part of our group coaching for a couple of weeks. You get to dive straight into Business Made Simple University, go straight to the sales unit, work your way through that course and really get upskilled yourself. And then you can share that knowledge with your team as well and be able to upskill them. So um, not only are you getting all the great content as part of the mastermind, you then get BMSU and you get that for an entire year. Even though Thrive only goes for six months, the BMSU content goes all the way through um, till, the, till this time time next year. So you can access that at any time. You'll get three masterclasses with business professionals who are going to present on their chosen field of expertise. And you also get priority access to our Simply Women Summit, which is our in-person retreat, which is happening next March in Byron Bay. Doesn't that sound fabulous? Cannot wait for that. The thing about Thrive is we want you to feel supported and we want to be able to celebrate you and we want to surround you with people who can really lift you up. So um, you will be supported not just by me, but by my team of business besties, people who can step you through each part of the process so that you have time to still work in your business and then also be working on your business. Because I know you can't just drop everything and go, okay, I'm going to go away for six months and do some learning and then just expect to pick it up six months later. I know how important it is to be able to find time to work in your business and on your business and Thrive will really help you be able to make that a possibility. You'll find yourself surrounded by, uh, you know, a collective of people who are really rooting for you and, and rooting for your rise, who want to celebrate your wins and help support you. Um, and you'll be surrounded by other business women who get you, people that get you. And sometimes that's that's a really important piece of the puzzle that people forget. So I don't want you to spend the next six months falling behind in terms of your to-do list, feeling like you are not supported, feeling like you are overwhelmed, feeling like you are falling behind. What I want from for you is for you to be able to spend six months with us in Thrive, to be able to get that momentum to move your business forward, and then to be able to do the planning that's involved in Thrive, to be able to use that momentum to push you through to the end of the year and into the start of 2022. Uh, because it's, it's so important to invest in yourself and invest in your own learning. But I know that, you know, many masterminds are $15,000 and they go for a whole year and they're very involved. And I know that for that in kind of investment, especially for people running small businesses, that's really hard. So for Thrive, it's only a six month process, um, but we want the, the results for you to be long lasting. So it's a less of an investment, but it's hopefully going to have a really, really big impact. So you can join us today for just $299 as your deposit. It's a six month program. It's made up of seven installments of $750. Or if you pay it all up front, um, you can get a saving of $651. The total then is $4,599. It's capped at a small number of business owners. We already have um, three people secured and we have a couple of inquiries that we're doing some discovery calls tomorrow with people so I don't want you to miss out we do close the doors on Sunday and there is at this point only three places left but as I said I've got some calls tomorrow so if you'd love to join us please do not wait please
please try and jump on it as soon as you can. And we only open the doors once a year. So we, because it is a six month program, we're doing it from now till October. And then we don't revisit it and reopen the doors until next April. So if you really want to get some momentum and start moving forward with your business, then I encourage you to jump on and join us for Thrive for now. It's ideal for both product and service-based businesses. We currently have ladies signed up who are from each, like there's one one of one and two of the other. So it's already a really nice mix of really lovely, really ambitious, really, you know, kick-ass women. And I really hope that you can join us. Um, but if you're just meeting me for the first time today and you don't actually, have you've never heard of me before, firstly, thank you for being brave and turning up to, to listen to what I have to say. But also I thought it would be important to share with you um, what other people who have worked with me have said before. Um, this is Kip. She has, she's a, well, a marriage celebrant. And so for her in her business, it's so important um, to make sure that she has, you know, she's got one chance to make a really big impact on her customer, but then she doesn't actually have to worry about retention. So many of us in business have to worry about getting the customer coming back and coming back. But for her, her customers are very rarely coming back. And that's probably because they're only getting married once. So um, we talked a lot in her coaching session about um, being able to, to be the person that all of the brides in her area are going to be um, to be calling because she's the, you know, the place that you want to be and she's the person that you want to hire. And this is the lovely Karen Malik who um, just has lovely things to say about me. So of course I have to put that up <laughs> and I've known Karen for many, many years and, and very much look up to her. So um, it's finding time and finding this, um, this passion of mine to be able to share my knowledge. You know, I always thought that for me being a ballet teacher was my thing and my calling but what I have learned is that I get so much joy out of building businesses in the same way that I um, got joy out of building little, little ballerinas, being able to help people build their own businesses. And for those businesses to then go on and have massive impact um, for their communities is so rewarding. And it's something that I'm really, really enjoying at the moment. So I really hope that, um, that you have got a lot out of what we've been talking about today and that you will join me in being able to do more of that. If you book, between now and Saturday, then you'll get a bonus extra coaching um, session with me as well. So if you're thinking about it, and if it's something that you would like to discuss with me, I've got some time tomorrow to jump on a 15 minute call with you. If we want to talk about your business and talk about um, any concerns you might have, any thoughts that you might have, and um, and then really see if this is a good fit for you, I'm more than happy to do that. And as I said, if you book before Saturday, then you'll also get a bonus coaching session with me thrown in there. So as I said, there's only three places left. The doors do close on Sunday. And so if you are interested, I would love to hear from you. If you want to book one of those calls, just email us now, hello at simplystacymorgan.com. Christy has put in the chat um, a link to our Thrive Mastermind page. If you want to go to simplystacymorgan.com and check it out, um, you can do that. It's had a bit of a zhuzh up this afternoon, our Thrive Mastermind, because it, um, it had a lot of visitors this morning. So um, we've given it a little zhuzh just for you guys, for the, for the the special 7:30 crew <laughs> that you've come through so um go and check that out as well and now we're into some question time so christy have we got anybody in the chat that wants to put their hand up and and jump in or any questions that have come through i'm not sure if everyone's just tired but no one's popped a question in yet so maybe oh. they just all want to come on and and ask you their questions themselves let me see who's in the room who are these fabulous people? I'm just. Hi. How are you going? Hi, Stacey. It's Lata here. I'm going well. Thank you. I don't have any questions. I've just been really soaking up what you were saying. Um, yeah. Awesome. Take lots of notes. <laughs> Good. That's what I like to hear. Um, hopefully I didn't speed talk too fast for you you know I had so so much content to get through and often I just go blah which is why it's really important that Christy hit record and then can send you the replay you can watch me in slow motion if you need to go back over it but but thank you so much for joining us I love it Melanie's just asked a question Stacey say again uh, sorry Melanie has asked a question she would love to know how you juggle multiple businesses <laughs> hi Miss Mel Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so compartmentalizing different businesses on different days, scheduling my time, you know, 
Morgan Media gets pretty ignored Monday through Wednesday. Um, but on Thursdays and Fridays, it's go time. So I guess in the same way that I compartmentalize my time on those days where I'm trying to be mum and be business owner at the same time, knowing when I can get time to do certain things is really important. So I know that I can do my Morgan Media stuff on Thursdays and Fridays. I know that Henry's in daycare on those days. I know that um, the bus picks the kids up on a Thursday afternoon. And so I get a big chunk of time and I make sure it's scheduled out in my calendar. And then that means that Port Macquarie Performing Arts gets a bit ignored on Thursdays and Fridays because, you know, so much of my attention and focus goes to um, goes to Morgan Media stuff then as well. I'm super lucky that um, when it comes to Simply Stacey Morgan things, um, that kind of goes, that's kind of like because we're building momentum and we're, we're doing so much new stuff, it's going all the time. But I have two fabulous people who are working on that with me. So there's not a lot of... Um, not a lot of sit and deep work stuff I need to do with that because they do a lot of it. One of the people is the fabulous Christy, who's here, and also Tanae Sanders from the Strategy Studio. She helps me with that too, and she's absolutely wonderful. So it's all about time block and mail and then trying to stick to that. That's the hard bit. Blocking the time is the easy part, then just making sure you stick to it. Is, is the hard bit, but it's lovely to see you. Tanya, you jumped on too. Hello. I need a staircase for you two to come walking down. How are you, Miss Tanya? Myself. I'm good, thanks, Stace. How are you? I'm good. You look gorgeous as always. Oh, thanks. Oh, I, 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 miss, I miss you guys. I really miss just being around you. Hey, Mel. Um, Yes, I had a question. I've just put it through. Um, was how did you begin to hire staff? Great question. Um, for me, it comes down to what do I want to do and what am I good at doing and where are the gaps? Yeah. And then finding what I used to do was I used to just hire me over and over. And so I had a whole team of me's and we were yeah. all kind of good at kind of a couple of things, but we all got on great <laughs> because we were all really <laughs> like-minded. What I've learned is stop hiring yourself. Instead, be really specific about what skill set you want to hire, what you need done, yeah. and then be brave enough to put the money and the resources behind it and and put ev and put everything into it. Yeah. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but you have to, you have to be brave enough to, to, to figure out what it is and then to go for it gun ho I've just recorded an episode of Miss Bossy Boots with Jane, which won't be out until well, a couple of weeks now. We're starting Miss Bossy Boots back up on the 16th, but she was talking about playing small and the thoughts that keep you playing small. And one of the things that she has never done is she's always, she runs a marketing agency. She's always hired people to do, a little bit of social media and people to do a little bit of admin and people to do a little bit of cleaning or whatever in her business. She's never been brave enough to hire a senior marketing strategist, which is actually what she needs because that's what she does. And she doesn't have enough hours in the day, but she thought that hiring that person would cost too much money. So she spent a lot of money paying a little bit of money over here and a little bit of money over here and yep. a little bit of money over here when actually what she should have done and what, you know, her learning is and what we recorded and talked about was if she had just been brave enough to put the money behind it, put the momentum behind it, step out and give it a really good crack, then, yeah. then it would have been easier. So I cool. encourage you to make sure that you know exactly what you want and to really take that process slowly and not just get the first person that comes in the door and to, you know, hire slow, fire fast and really not, you know, not accept what is not good enough. Get, get the very best person. Okay. What that's, you need. that's awesome. Thank you. It's hard though. Sometimes I, you know, hiring is, is exhausting. So, you know, you put out an ad and someone answers it and you go, you'll be right. <laughs> that'll, that'll do it. Come in. Here's the yeah. here's the passwords to my entire life. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, no. Um, I think 
that's a really important yeah. lesson to learn. And, no, it's really, and it's really one that hurts when you make it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got to. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us. I just love the fact that you've stuck through to the end to have a chat with me and to to let all of that sink in because, of course, now you're going to go off into like your normal lives and everything will start going around in your mind. But if you wake up tomorrow morning and decide you want to get on a call with me, we've got time blocked out tomorrow to do that. So send me an email, hello at simplystacymorgan.com. I would love to talk you through all of the benefits and all of the um, the great things that we're going to be doing in Thrive um, and would just be absolutely honoured and delighted to have each and every one of you join us. Thank you so much. Guess what? We did all of that and my children didn't come in and interrupt me once. What a win. <laughs> Fabulous. All righty. Have a wonderful night. Thank you again, Christy, for, for facilitating. Please stay in touch. If there's anything that I ever need, that I ever need, that you ever need from me, please shout out and have a wonderful night.